guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about organic chemistry, aka the bane of most chemistry students' very existence. So organic chemistry has a very bad reputation of being the hardest chemistry class you're ever going to take, which may be for some, but like as a chemistry major, it actually wasn't the hardest class I ever have taken. At the time, Orgo, or Ochem, whatever you call it, made me want to jump off a cliff. There's no cliffs in Salisbury, so unfortunately I couldn't jump off a cliff, but um, yeah, so here I am. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the tips that I've learned through going through two semesters of organic chemistry, and this is how I actually ended up getting A's in both Orgo 1 and Orgo 2. So, I'm not saying I'm a pro, but this is what I did, and I'm just putting them out there in case somebody else is terrified like I was before I took Orgo. So, here we go. Okay, so all of this is my Orgo notes from an entire year of taking organic chemistry. It's going to take a lot of work, but it's not impossible. But since I had this with me because I was thinking of studying for the Chem GRE, I just thought, hey, why not do a video on it, you know? My school did two semesters of organic chemistry. The first one was more like visual and not as much synthesis. And then the second semester was a lot of synthesis, like crazy amount of reactions and synthesis. So you can do well in Orgo 1 and not as well in Orgo 2 or vice versa sometimes. So just Orgo as a whole, these are my tips for you guys. My very first tip is, especially for those like me, who have testing anxiety at times and sometimes just going through practice problems even if it doesn't necessarily feel like you're learning anything sometimes it helps you just like relax a little bit once you go to take the test because you're more familiar with the kind of questions that could be asked so the first tip is to go through your book and know your definitions just if something means something else, know it. So you don't get confused when you're reading and you're like in class and he starts using a new term and you already forgot what it is. Like try to familiarize fam blah, 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 blah. <laughs> try to familiarize yourself with all the terms so that you're not lost in class the next lectures because he already talked about it once and so he assumes you remember. Just go back through the book and just re review all the terms. Why can't I talk? So basically what I would do, I would see what section my professor is going to go through that day and I would review all the terms that he was going to go through by reading that section. And then after lecture, I would go through and you know how normally they have the practice problems? So normally I'd go through the easier practice problems after lecture. And also because I like lots of practice problems because I get nervous, I would go through before the quizzes and before the exams I would go through the challenge problems. So normally books have these where they're just like the harder set of problems that not everybody needs to attempt because they're so hard. But if you can get through these challenge problems you most likely can get through the problems that are going to be on the test. So I recommend going through the hardest problems in the book before the exams and the quizzes. Okay, so second tip, especially for the first semester or the beginning of organic chemistry, it really helps to visualize. So I actually, I didn't need this as much because I feel like I was okay visualizing, but I know a lot of my friends actually use these and we split just like a molecular modeling kit. So this basically, if you haven't seen one before, you've probably seen it because I'm pretty sure they use it in high school and stuff. But it just has the little atoms. So basically the molecular modeling kit is just helpful to visualize the orientations of molecules because you're going to really need to know that in organic one or your first semester or the beginning, whatever your college does. But if you kind of struggle with visualizing, these actually really help. So I don't know if your professor would let you take it into the exam like mine did, but they help when you're going through practice problems. Okay, so sorry if the camera's moved because my camera decided to be annoying and run out of space and then my tripod decided to fall down, so. Okay, so after visualizing, and getting your molecules together and seeing how things work, you want to take the next step, you know? Be an extrovert, not a STEM introvert. And a big part of organic chemistry and chemistry in general, I have learned going on my fourth year is you need to make friends. And I'm not just talking like 
talk to them in class friends. I'm talking symbiotic relationship friends, you know? So in organic chemistry, I noticed that each person has their strengths and their weaknesses. So for me, in my group of friends, I had a good core study group. I could just visualize things and sometimes my friends just, for some reason, they just really couldn't visualize. And sometimes I could explain that to them, but there's other things that I just did not understand and didn't, it just didn't click in my head and they could explain those to me. So a big part of organic chemistry is just get a really good study group so that you can just conquer every question possible. Because sometimes you go to your professor and they've been doing this for so long that when they go to explain it to you, they just don't understand that you don't understand. You feel? Sometimes you just have to work with other people and kind of troubleshooting with other people that kind of sort of know what they're doing but kind of sort of don't but you can each like put it together like a puzzle really helps you know how to like how to go through the thought process rather than go to your professor where he'll just probably give you the answer instead of you actually going through the thought process of struggling. Learning I feel like is the struggle of trying to understand how to figure out a problem and obviously don't get stuck forever but since you're with people and a good study group you won't be stuck on it forever because everybody will be helping out everybody but you'll still be going through the thought process of figuring it out oh and not only the friends in your class but you also it's a very good idea to make friends with upperclassmen so people who have already taken organic chemistry or already have taken a class with your professor just really helps because not only can they provide you with other study materials like their old notes or old quizzes but also they can kind of help you with how the professor works or what the professor normally puts on their exams and I found this really helpful because sometimes the harder part isn't learning the organic chemistry but it's what to expect is going to be on the exams and certain professors kind of are tight-lipped about that and they kind of just don't want to tell you at all what's on the exams and it really helps if you ask someone and say hey does he li like to put a lot of like multiple choice or does he like to put a lot of synthesis so um, this kind of comes with the next point is that try to ask your professor in office hours if you can how he what to expect on the exams and kind of what type of each problem might be on the exam because you don't want to spend all your time struggling with a certain type of question that you're a little iffy about but you kind of get and then kind of forget about other things if there's more of the other thing or other type of question on the exam and this is just so that you can like cover the entire chapter or it's probably multiple chapters and not get stuck and hyper focus on one thing that you're struggling with and it's easy to do that in chemistry because you won't understand everything and especially in organic chemistry there's certain things that you actually don't fully understand until you get into higher chemistry classes didn't you just mow the lawn this morning? so anyway with one of my professors we actually asked him but for each exam as a class and we would say what percentage or how many questions should we expect from each section of that um, unit and he would actually tell us he would say hey you're gonna have five synthesis problems seven multiple choice whatever and they're gonna be worth this amount of points so you can kind of study accordingly even though you should study everything and make sure that you can cover all your bases but in case you're crammed for time or you know what your weakness is and you know that there's a lot of that question that kind of helps you get an idea of what you should study and how you should study. Okay, and my last tip is that Khan Academy is a great friend as well. So even though this didn't really help in my second semester of chemistry because a lot of it was synthesis problems and just a lot of problem solving and it's kind of like a puzzle that you need to figure out, Khan Academy really helps for the beginning of organic chemistry because just a lot of terms and a lot of visualization so it's a lot of visualizing of the chemical structures and understanding terms and understanding what they mean and what that would mean with the chemical um, it actually helped me because sometimes I would get a little bit stuck on what things actually meant like if you draw it and I like how he draws everything so Khan Academy is great Please, oh no go away go away Now I can uh, 
finish my video. Okay guys, so that's all my tips. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down below because I love answering chemistry questions, especially just, I don't know, I just really like being a nerd sometimes. So ask away, friends. So if you're going into organic chemistry, please don't be scared because it turned out to be one of my favorite subjects and although I probably have forgotten most of it, actually most likely like 99% of it, it's still one of my favorite subjects. So feel free to ask questions, probably not specific questions, that would be very extra and I probably wouldn't be able to answer them anyway, but if you have any general questions please ask. And I really hope this video helped you or at least helped you feel a little bit more confident in going into organic chemistry. And if you have any video suggestions at all, also comment those down below and don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Okay guys, so that's all of my video. I hope these tips... Okay, never mind. Bye. Peace.